All right, what's going on, y'all? Hey, uh, about eight or nine months ago, I put out a video called Relapse into Transgender Seduction. And uh, I've tried on this channel to really be transparent, to be open and honest about my own struggles, that I'm a man that doesn't have it all together, that I'm continuing to walk this out. And I try to share with you my defeats along with the victories that I hope are helpful to you men out there that might be benefiting from some of this. And God's really opened up something new to me here lately that I hope to go into in the next few videos. But I really want to set the stage here sharing a little bit of what happened a few days ago um, after you know walking in victory and, and greater freedom I relapsed you could say again I decided to yield in a moment of weakness to those old ways and I want to share with you a series of scriptures here to really you know illustrate what uh, I experienced and what I believe is um, going on when we yield to those transgender temptations I want to start with Jeremiah 2.13. It says here, My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountains of living waters, and have hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. And so God is speaking of his people Israel here, who had turned away from him and had followed after false gods and, and all sorts of idolatry. It's they taken things into their own hands. They made for themselves cisterns, and even these things that they made could hold no water. And so instead of drinking of the living waters that God offered, they went thirsty and after these, these vain things. And it's a perfect illustration in my experience of what the transgender issue is about. Um, as I enter into that fantasy, you know, for many years I cultivated a very elaborate fantasy. And, the, you know, I'm, I can be tempted to go back down those roads. And it can just be very simple things like thinking about performing a female activity or holding a feminine attitude or doing some female behavior or thinking in a feminine way or relating to myself or thinking of relationships, how they might be if I was acting in a feminine role. If I allow my mind to start thinking those things, my entire experience shifts. Um, and I, I believe this, this verse really says that sin leads to an unquenchable thirst for more sin and that's my experience as I as I play around with those thoughts it leads to further thoughts and there is no contentment until more thoughts and and we and I allow myself to rest further down that road it's almost like there's a carrot on the end of a stick and as I hew those broken cisterns that have no water I continue to have a, a deeper desire and a more unquenchable thirst for more of that sin. And a few days ago I was presented with, I was kind of caught off guard with some intense temptation and I allowed myself, I let my guard down and you know by my own choice I went, I played around with some of those thoughts and I was reminded of how intense that thirst can be. And I, you know. I want to. I don't want to make this video too long. I want to go into some more scriptures here. Um, this is out of Ephesians four nineteen. He's talking about the the Gentiles, those that do not know God, being past feeling, so they cannot feel the the consequence of sin. They have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness, and so sin has a way of numbing us. The Apostle John, uh, he he has uh, in the Revelation. We're given this scripture in 17.2. It says that the inhabitants of the earth in the last days were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And her uh, is speaking of the Babylonian system, the great harlot. And so it's speaking of a drunkenness. And so I was reminded again of how intoxicating this sin is that as we enter into that fantasy, we, we quickly become drunk with it. We can't think clearly anymore. It, we become numb to reality. Um, it no longer feels that wrong anymore. We feel so much pleasure. We feel a, a, a sort of counterfeit peace. This, all that inner turmoil and tension dissipates, and we become blind. We can no longer see the reality. We, we're no longer receptive to the truth. And um, so I was reminded of that. And, you know, over the past. You know, a couple years, especially over the past year, God has really been doing a work in me to transform me and really change my desires, my appetites. 
so that those things are really disgusting to me that they're no longer something I want to do um, but you know in that moment I do see that there is some sort of you know temporary and instant gratification but I was still you know kind of observing this and as I gave myself over to it things become less clear I become more drunk and once you open up that door it's really it, in here a few days later I'm I'm still closing that door it's it it it's really a battle once you once you play around with that stuff and so even though I didn't do anything outwardly I was just laying in my bed trying to fall asleep I understand the danger and even playing around with these thoughts and you know the Apostle Paul and when he wrote in Hebrews he says here in 313 he says exhort one another daily lest any of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin so the Apostle understood that sin has a way of hardening us it's very deceitful the more we play around with it the less our spiritual senses become numb we're no longer able to see clearly we become drunk and blind and you know fortunately I was able to turn to God and he's really opened up something new to me regarding healing that I want to talk about in some in these next videos and and even this evil was turned around for good um, I've shared with you that that I am engaged to a beautiful woman that I was able to open up to and share with her my, my shortcomings and and I really believe it drew us closer together that we were able to have just some transparency be able to support one another in prayer and really I, I would I didn't I don't think it was not good for me to go that way but God has really opened up some new things to me that I want to share and um, as we come out of the bondage we're able to see more clearly here I am a few days later I'm able to, to think more clearly I'm in my right mind I'm no longer under the influence of that sin to where once we're consumed with that sin that's all we can think about we're trying to build our lives around it we're trying to find ways to satisf satisfy those desires more so trying to, to get the next you know and I believe you know here I'm talking about it almost like it's a drug and I do believe that's the case but any addict will tell you once you become so addicted to a drug and you become dependent upon it you're no longer getting the highs like you once did early on in your use and so I believe that most I believe the people that have given themselves over to the transgender desire once knew those great that high and, and that sort of pursuit for more pleasure and, and playing around with those thoughts but once I believe we build our lives around it and we become addicted to it, it's it's almost like we need to, to play, we need to live in that fantasy to even feel normal. Just like an addict needs to take the drugs just to feel normal. They're no longer chasing the high. We've given ourselves so far over to it that we've become numb. And um, something that my spiritual mentor has shared with me that I, you know, it's, I, I think, you know, it's just a little play on words, but... You know, Jesus is the only one that can offer us true peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. You know, but the devil, he offers us peace, as in a peace, P-I-E-C-E. -E. And so this transgender fantasy is really just, it's just like dangling a carrot in front of us, offering us a little peace if we're willing to pay and give over part of ourself. And then we never find true peace that's only found in Christ. And we've really been drinking out of broken cisterns we become very thirsty and instead God invites us to drink from his table he says that if we believe on him out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water and I've come to know that living water and it really grieves me that I could even for a moment turn back to those old ways but you know God has a way of showing us our frailties he has a way of humbling us of showing us our need to depend upon him and in, in this particular instance, share with me something more that he wants to, to do in my life regarding healing. Um, and I think it, it's the next big piece of the puzzle that I want to share. But uh, I hope maybe some of this resonates with you. That I think anyone that's ever given themselves over to the transgender fantasy knows what it's like to have one's whole experience consumed with that. And... Um, there is a way out, and uh, I hope to share with you some of my journey, and I wish you all well, and may the Lord bless you.